episode, we're going to be learning about vectors in physics. So vectors are very important because it sets a lot of the groundwork for what you need to know in elementary physics. Um, it's a very important part, and it's something that's very easy to understand once you learn it properly. So vectors are important, and they're made up of two main quantities, those two being the direction and its magnitude. So the direction of a vector is just like it says, it's the direction at which it points. So for example, if you have a vector like this, designated as vector A, as you can see, if we're using normal compass directions, north, south, east, and west, you can see that this vector A is heading west. So that's something that's easy to know. And that would describe the direction of a vector. Now, if you're looking at the magnitude, say you have two vectors here, vector A and vector B. As you can see, vector B has a lot larger magnitude because the line is longer. So the length of the line is denoted by the magnitude, and the direction of which it's heading is the direction. As you can see, oops, sorry, it's actually heading east. So it's heading east for both of them, but vector A has a much smaller magnitude. So in simple terms, the definition of a vector is a quantity that is fully described by its magnitude and direction. If it does not have a magnitude and a direction, it is not a vector. It's not a vector. It's very simple. And like I was showing you guys before, vectors are usually drawn by arrows. So the arrow is a very important thing when you're describing vectors, mainly because as you can see, the arrow head represents the direction of which it's heading, and the length, like I said before, represents the magnitude. Two very important things when discussing vectors. It's important to understand that it's made up of a direction and a magnitude. And when we're denoting vectors in terms of when you're writing it down mathematically, you usually can describe vectors like this, A with an arrow on top, to represent vector A, or you could say B with an arrow on top to represent vector B. Those are just ways to write it down mathematically. Um, so as you can see, I can draw a couple different vectors here, and I can show some differences. So this is vector A, this is vector B, much larger magnitude on B, but they're in the same direction. So same direction, different magnitude, just abbreviated as mag, and you can also have two vectors that are the same magnitude, but different directions, so A and B, they are the same magnitude, but they're heading in different directions, B is heading west, A is heading east, so they kind of cancel each other out, if you want to say that this is a force of 10 newtons and 10 newtons, you're not going anywhere because these two are going to cancel each other out. It's pretty simple. You're, there's no net force. If you have a vector going this way and a vector going this way, and you're pushing something, so someone is pushing an object um, this direction with 5 newtons, and someone is pushing it this direction, it's not going to go anywhere. So the resultant vector is going to be zero. You're not going anywhere. Um, so before we talk more about that, it's important to understand that something as simple as velocity is actually a very classic vector quantity that's used in physics. So if you want to say, for example, you know, you're traveling 10 meters per second, you have to say that, yes, you may be traveling 10 meters per second, but you're not traveling 10 meters per second and being still. I mean, it doesn't make sense. You're going 10 meters per second north. Maybe you're going south. Maybe you're going east. You're going 10 meters per second in a specific direction. So that's why we have the magnitude component. So, and then, like I said before, and I'm going to keep saying, you have the magnitude, and here we have the direction. Because if you're moving, you're heading towards a destination, or you're just heading somewhere. There's a direction. So, that's what makes velocity a vector quantity. Now, unfortunately, like I was showing a lot of vectors before, you know, one may look like this, one may look like this, or like this. They're not always nice and easy and simple straight lines like this. Sometimes you may get a vector like this, or like this, or... Yeah, that was actually kind of an easy one. But you get my point. You can get different, different types of vectors. They can go different directions. There's many different combinations.
see that you have a vector going well this is a graph we have right here and here's your x-axis and this is your y-axis and say you have a vector going in this direction it's important to understand that say you're pushing an object this direction you're pushing it horizontally a certain direction and it's also going vertically a certain direction if you really think about it so this represents the vertical component here because it's running up and down and this is the horizontal component right here because it's running from side to side and together the vertical and horizontal components represent the resultant vector because these are showing really the direction in which the object is moving and if you really look at it if I can redraw it this is a resultant vector horizontal vertical you can see here that we have a right triangle and if you really want to you can use Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find a resultant vector or to find some of the components although I'm not going to talk about that in this video right now I just thought it would be important to mention that so what I am going to be talking about is how to add together vectors which is a pretty simple approach so say you have vector a designated like this and then you have vector b like this and somebody wants to know how do you add together vector a plus vector b how would you do that well the first thing well this is going to be done through something called the head to tail method which I'm going to just demonstrate here so as you can see this is vector a and this is vector B. Now, the head of the vector represents the end points, or actually the start points. So this would be the head of the vector B, this is the head of vector A. And then the tails represent where the arrows are. This is a pretty bad arrow, but this is the arrow of vector B and the arrow of vector A. So this is called the head-to-tail method because you're going to connect the head of the vector B to the tail of vector A. And you're usually going to connect the from the second vector to the first one. So it will be, be a little bit easy. So this is vector A here. And this is vector B. Now doing it from the head to tail method, you want to combine the head of vector B to the tail of vector A. So as a result, you're going to end up with something like this. This is vector A. And then this is vector B. And you're also going to have a resultant vector, which is the result of these two, which is going to be designated R. Now you may wonder, why does the resultant vector go that direction? So this was A, this was B, just by using the head-to-tail method. And the resultant vector is actually going from this direction, mainly because, because the resultant vector goes from where you started to where you ended. So in A, we started at the head of A, and we ended up with the tail of B. So this is the head of A and the tail of B. The resultant vector also started from the head of A to the tail of B, as you can see here. So that's kind of why the resultant vector is going that direction. Now say you want to learn how to subtract vectors. So this is vector A, and this is vector B. And you want to know how to subtract them. Well, in order to subtract them, if you want to do a minus b, like we did before, you want to draw vector a as normal. But you may be tempted to think that, <clears throat> although we're doing a head-to-tail method, in that you're connecting the head of b to the tail of a, you may be tempted to simply draw it like this. But I would say that's incorrect. You actually want to start off like this, and you have to draw it this direction for b. The reason being is because when you're subtracting vectors you have to learn that you have to switch the direction. So the one that you're subtracting is the one that you're going to switch the direction. So for B, we're subtracting B from A. So in that case, we're going to switch the direction of B. And that would give you the resultant vector of R going this direction. Because if you're imagining pushing an object from here, you're pushing it up some, and then you're pushing it to the right some. So A is going north, B is going east, the resultant vector is going northeast.